Welcome back, Golly Vibes family. So, they try to get him again. They try to get him again. Second assassination attempt. I mean, at this point, it's just like, as we would say back in California and L.A., they on his head. They on his head. They don't want any chances. They don't want to take any chances. They on his head. They trying to take him out. Question is, why? And how do they even get close enough to do so? Or is there an inside tip? Is there an inside man? Are there spies? What's really going on in Trump's camp? To the point where they're able to do this. Right? It's absolutely ridiculous. Former President Donald Trump accused happened at his West Palm Beach Golf Club in Florida. The suspect, Ryan Wesley Rout, I guess that's the suspect who tried to assassinate this man, who has a criminal record and recent political obsessions, was arrested near the golf course after being spotted with a rifle. The FBI Secret Service believe Rout waited for hours intended to harm Trump. My goodness. He waited for hours. He was right there set up. He has been charged with possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. Trump told Fox News he claimed that suspect Ryan Wesley Rout acted based on rhetoric from Biden and Harris. Interesting stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. This and here you have Mr. Mr. Wesley Orion. So this is him. He waited out for hours for Trump. This afternoon, call came out, shots fired. Donald Trump has been targeted in a second apparent assassination attempt while he was at his golf club in Florida's West Palm Beach. A man was spotted pointing a rifle through a fence about 400 yards from where the former president was playing golf. The shooting comes two months after a gunman tried to kill him during a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. Here's what we know about the second assassination attempt on Trump. The incident occurred as Trump was walking between the fifth and sixth holes at his West Palm Beach golf club. The golf course is surrounded by shrubbery, so some, when somebody gets into the shrubbery, they're pretty much out of sight, all right? And at this level that he is at right now, he's not the sitting president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. But because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the Secret Service deems possible. A Secret Service agent spotted a rifle barrel sticking out of a fence near the club's property line. Agents walk ahead and behind the former president when he's golfing to scope out threats. Security service personnel fired at least four shots at the suspect as he fled the scene. Fortunately, we were able to locate a witness that came to us and said, hey, I saw the guy running out of the bushes. He jumped into a black Nissan, and I took a picture of the vehicle and the tag, wow. which was great. So we had that information. Our real-time crime center put it out to the license plate readers, and we were able to get a hit on that vehicle. Law enforcement officers managed to track down and detain the suspect as he drove down I-95. Officials have identified the suspect as Ryan Wesley Routh. Look at this liberal. Investigators said they don't know if the gunman himself fired a shot during the encounter. In the bushes where this guy was is an 8K47 style rifle with a scope. Wow. Two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had a ceramic tile in them and a GoPro, which he was going to take pictures of. North Carolina court records show Ralph has a long history of misdemeanor and felony charges, including weapons violations. Law enforcement officials have pointed to a social media account they believe is linked to Ralph, where he spoke of trying to bring foreigners to Ukraine to fight against Russia. Wow. The FBI said it's investigating the incident as an assassination attempt. These people get taken over. They get possessed. For you to sit there for hours waiting on this man to get a clear shot, you just sit in there for hours on hours, willing to sit there for even more hours 
to try to take somebody's life. You are in a place of full possession. A lot of them, if you go to like one of these liberal marches and stuff like that, what you're going to notice is a lot of them are angry. A lot of them are very angry. If you even mention Trump, they'll curse you out. They'll yell at you. They'll spit on you. A lot of cases, they'll hit you. Why? Because it's a spirit on them that's affecting them. And that is that is blocked their mind and veiled their judgment where they don't even care about truth. It's like walking zombies. That's what they become. You ever try talking to somebody and you just can't get through to them? Through to them? You're telling them the truth. You're telling them the truth. You're like, look, I can even show you the documents. I can even show you the documents. Listen to me. I have a video showing the truth. And they still don't listen to you. You can you can show them the actual visual of something that they don't believe and they still don't see it. That's when you know it's more than just physical, it's spiritual. There's a spirit on them. And now they are veiled to seeing truth. They want to believe the lie so much that they've stepped into a place of actually believing it. No matter what you tell them, no matter the evidence and proof you put in their face, they want to believe what they want to believe, so that's what they begin to do. This is even biblical. You go to Romans 120, 125 through 28. I believe it is when the Lord is talking about how people didn't want the truth. They didn't have a love for the truth. So God gave them over to a strong delusion. So that they can believe the lie because they didn't want the truth. That happens with a lot of different people who come into being possessed. A lot of different people who have demons in them. A lot of different people who have dark spirits on them. They come into that place where their judgment is cloudy. They don't see truth anymore. Their, their soul is so wounded. They need a savior. If they can only allow the light to penetrate the darkness, they just need a little bit. All it takes is the faith the size of a mustard seed to move their mindset, to move their mountain. We know that mountain in Hebrew speaks of mindsets. So just a little, just a little bit of revelation can change their mindset, but it has to penetrate. Which is why it's good for people like me and people like you to talk. Because a lot of people listen when they don't even expect it sometimes. A lot of different seeds get sown in different parts of people's earth when they don't even expect it sometimes. So a lot of people, they have a seed in them that's dormant. They have a seed in them that's just sitting in them until one day the Lord decides to water it. You know, a seed that sits in the dirt, it can stay there for years on years on years. If it never cracks open, if it never dies and begins to grow, it will just sit there in the dirt until it gets watered. Same thing with revelation that you are giving people. If you're somebody who's just watching this right now, you can be an atheist. I Listen, I have thousands of atheists who have watched my music video, Dear Atheist. And a lot of them don't agree. But they watched it. You know what that is? That's a seed being planted into their soil. That's a seed being planted into their mind. Now it's just a seed inside of them until one day. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to water that seed. And out of nowhere, they're going to be like, oh, wait, wait a minute. This makes sense now. I'm starting to see it. The light has penetrated. So now that seed is cracked open. That plant begins to go to the surface, hallelujah, where the light is. And starts really coming into a place of truth. Now they can breathe. Now they can see. Now they can feel. <laughs> Their spiritual senses have opened up. Their spiritual senses have opened up. <laughs> They're wondering, where did it come from? That seed that was planted because you decided to watch that video because it said, Dear Atheist, and you're an atheist. Do you know how important it is 
that you speak God's word. No matter if they get it at that time, the fact is you're speaking it. Your job is done. You've spoken his word. His word is now in their earth. Allow the Lord to do the increase. Hallelujah. Trust me, it'll happen. You just be strong and you be courageous and you allow the Lord to use you the way the Lord wants to use you. Hallelujah. You be a vessel for God. You be a mouthpiece for God. Allow your actions to speak and tell the world what type of disciple you are through your actions, through your doing, not just your hearing. Glory be to the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Pray for Trump. They're clearly trying to take his life for a reason. This is the second time they try to do it. Yet, there will still be people who will see this and be zombies. Hope you got the message. God bless. Love you. Shalom.